Hi everybody and welcome to the ASP Net Monsters. This is episode number 17 and today we're going to talk about structured logging which is one of my favorite things to talk about. So it's going to be pretty exciting. So take us away. You, you know, it, it's funny because um, I was going to say you must be married to an accountant but I guess that's actually not you. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you are. Really <laughs> That's right. <Yeah. laughs> Structured logging is exciting. <laughs> <laughs> There's, you know, yeah. it's not over the counting, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's perfect. Well, I'm so happy for you too. <laughs> okay, so structure logging. Here we go. Um, I wanted to start first by showing um, what it looks like to uh, pull up a, a logging framework. This is now again we're, when we're talking about what's provided by the ASP.NET framework, we're not talking about um, all that is possible with logging because it's just that thin layer. So often you're going to want to bring in a third-party logger that allows you to do more interesting things. And one of those things that I want to be able to do is, is this guy right here, this um, writing to a service, an endpoint that accepts logging. And when we're talking about structured logging, we're talking about depth of information inside of our logging events. So this is not too unlike what we would see in any other logging uh, framework just where we have an information level log that's being created in this particular case though there is something that's different I have a token in here called execution time and I've got uh, I'm passing in environment dot tick count now if you are familiar with the C sharp 6 style of string replacement you might actually anticipate that that environment dot tick count would be replaced where that ex execution time is but that's actually not what's happening here What's ha happening is that these are these tokens are actually being saved out as separate, um, you know, structured logs where there's uh, there's a serialization that happens outside of the message itself. So th we've got this token and this key value pair kind of thing going on. Now I'm going to delete this file that happens to be in my um, my project here because it will reappear as soon as I, I create as soon as I, I start this project. So we are going to come come back to what logging looks like for us, uh, especially structure logging looks like inside of ASP.NET, inside of our, our web projects. But I just first wanted to kind of bring to light the, what the difference is between our standard logging and, and structure logs in more detail. So I'm going to open this project in my Explorer and I'll start a PowerShell window really quickly. This lets me get at the project root. So I can just type a dir and you can see I've got my project.json. So now I can type dnx and then the export uh, the command that's exported by default in a console application in ASP.NET is actually the name of the project. So I can do ASP.NET Core Logging, and that will run my program for me. And you can see over here that log.txt was created. So flipping back to my project, here's that information execute that in information level executed at, and then the time. So this is what we would normally see. This is what we see when that string is actually the, the replacement happens. This is just a text provider. It doesn't support the tokenized or the, the structured storage. So because I'm writing to a text file, that's what it does. It just replaces it and, and, and drops the text in the file for me. So that, that was created. They call that's that string interpolation. Interpolation. That's right. Isn't that a great word? Interpolation. I like to say it a lot. And then, then it starts to not sound like <laughs> a word anymore after a while. It's it's like a four dollar word, so you should use that one next time you do a stand up because <laughs> people will be impressed. Perfect. <laughs> so this is uh, what I'm doing here is I'm configuring the static log. The there's a static uh, log uh, class that's available, object that's available. It's got a logger on it. I'm configuring that. I'm saying write to file log.txt, and that's what creates this log.txt for me. Um, after I call create logger and it'll write to any of the syncs that I configure. So one of the syncs that I've got is SEQ and let's have a quick look at what that means if I look at my project.json. I pulled in Sarah log, I've pulled in SEQ and I've pulled in colored console. So maybe we'll have a look at that as well but it's really just a matter of writing to the, con the colored console. I've also pulled in this other library called GenFu. Have you guys heard of that one? Weirdly, I have. I have. This one. Yeah, uh, Genfu. Um, what 
Gen Fu is going to allow me to do is to really quickly, I've got this person class, first name and last name. And what I want to do is I want to get a list of 100 people. I want those first names and last names to be a little bit different so that I can log them out. I'm just going to uncomment these lines of code. And I'm going to log them out. And I've got this entry time. But I'm also going to log the person object out as an object. So I've got people dot for each. And because I'm using the at person, that denotes to Sarah log that what I want to do is I want that to be actually, I want the object serialized, not just, don't just call to string on the object. I actually want it, that serialized. And that actually gets saved out as JSON so we can inspect it later. So why is this important? Well, let's have a quick look here. I've got this person class, first name, last name. I spin up a hundred of them. I dump them out. Now, obviously this isn't, you know, a huge, um, I'm going to delete my log file again, just so we can do that again. There, there's not a lot of value going on here, but we're going to come back to the ASP.NET project quickly, and then we'll see where that starts to happen as far as the value add goes. So again, we're going to look at our log file. And this is kind of interesting, right? We have person, first name, last name. We can see these logs as they're built out for us. But it doesn't let me, again, you know, this, this log.txt file doesn't really let me dive into inspection of the logs other than scrolling through log lines and lines and lines of text. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to open up SEQ, which is a server that you can download. It's a little three make download, install super easy. Um, you can all kinds of ways to extend it. There's apps that you can plug into it. But this was running here at port 5341, and that is what I have asked Serialog to write to for SEQ. That's one of the syncs that I've pulled in. So when I refresh this, we're actually going to, um, oh, no events past the filter. Let's have a look at that again. So a sync in Serialog is just a, a destination. So a sync could be a, a log file, or it could be seek, or it could be anything else. Exactly. Text message to your phone. You could, uh, that would be an interesting one set up. If, 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 you know what? That's actually not a bad point. If there was a certain level of logging that you hit, like a critical error in a production app, maybe a text would actually be warranted. So it might be something there for that. I'm just going to quickly look and see if I can find... Um, a duplicate here of any kind. I'm again just scanning with my bare eyes. But do you know what we could do? Actually, let's uh, let's just do this. We want to start inspecting these. So again, we have these tokenized pieces. This is this is where things get really interesting. So I want to say person dot first name is equal to, and this is a C sharp like syntax that's available uh, through the SEQ interface. And I can say Brandon. And then I actually get two of them back. And now I can inspect these guys um, as proper structured logs. Cool that stuff. Super now, powerful. Yeah, super powerful. And this is just one thing. Um, Simon, you've worked with um, uh, other syncs that you can write to then as well. You were mentioning before. Did we lose Simon on the call? Hmm. We may have lost Simon on the call. Simon has worked with other. <laughs> um, I think he was he was talking about how he used Elasticsearch and he was writing um, or Logstash, right? He was so Logstash that the Elk stack, I think, uh, essentially is what he was writing. Up. Simon, are you still there? Yeah, yeah, I was. Sorry, it turns out the microwaves and uh, Wi-Fi signal in this house not so good together. <laughs> uh. <laughs> So tell us a little bit about what you're working with with Serialog. And yeah, so so you're using Seek, which is a, a great tool, and one of the ones that I really like is called Elasticsearch. So Elast or uh, is called Elk, and it's made up of Elasticsearch, Logstash, and Cabana, uh, and it's uh, basically a, log, a log examination pipeline. So it allows you to index your logs and search them, and uh, gives you some nice dashboards that you can create so that you can come up with a really nice visualization of what's happening in your system at any point in time. I like to use that in combination with Serialog because it allows me to, to drill in and pull individual pieces of data like we saw with Seek there that I can say, okay, I'm interested in all the log messages related to this or that. Um, and one of the things that I really find interesting is that I can give it a, a correlation ID so that if I have a message that's traveling through my system and each stage in the system, I have something happening to that message, I can just 
we look at the whole path that that message took by giving it a correlation ID so and searching that's, for that. That's actually super important. Let's take a look at how some of this structured logging comes in. If I were, um, for example, using logging on my controller, there's a lot more noise that happens inside of ASP.NET. So one of the reasons why I wanted to introduce um, uh, Siri log and structured logging in a console app. None of this is actually none of this here is actually framework related. This is all from the third party library. However, we can because we can leverage that inside of our you know just by adding this add Siri log uh, to our configure method inside of our startup.cs and in our actual startup we have another line of code where we actually configure wh which syncs we're going to write to. In this case, I am writing, you, now you pronounce that seek, is that correct? S-E-Q is seek? I'm, I'm, I'm I never know. sure, <laughs> you know, it's hard to tell, like, do you pronounce, seek? do you say S-U-V or do you say sub? Like, I mean, it's hard to, it's hard to know, right? But I say or sub. Is it CQ? Oh. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so what, what happens when the, one of the cool things about the structure logging pieces that we've been talking about is that this is actually how the ASP.NET a runtime actually operates. So the, the framework itself is actually emitting structured logs. So now let me pop into my web application and I will open up the folder in File Explorer and we're just gonna launch our web task here. So I'll do file, PowerShell. Where did you go, PowerShell? I'm uh, actually dealing with a uh, mouse that double clicks for me every time I touch it, so it's a little bit difficult to deal with. So DNX and web again is the one that's exported for me as a command for my project. So uh, once that server starts up, we're going to see some things start to happen. And there we go. So listening on port 5000, I can go back to SEQ, I can open up um, localhost, oops. Locksmith in Winnipeg. Local host <laughs> 5000. Um, if you live in Winnipeg and your house has been broken into, you may no, want to That might have James. been for an aunt or uncle. <laughs> uncle, that's it. Okay, um, so we have uh, the homepage startup. So you can see that we've got these messages happening here as well. As I navigate about, there's a lot of stuff going on. And from a from the console, it's not so easy to kind of digest this. From the log file, like a log.txt file, that's not so easy to digest. But in seek or seq or however it's pronounced, we can see that there's a lot more interesting data that shows up. And in this case, you know, we can drill in and we can see, you know, these are not the logs you're looking for. We've got a, um, in this particular case, we've got a home index that's being executed. But now when we start talking about that correlation ID, I can actually watch a request pass through the entire um, through the entire pipeline by use of something like a correlation ID, as you mentioned, Simon. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Okay, yeah, so... It looks like you have a request ID there that serves that purpose. Uh, request ID right there, so we can actually do uh, request ID is equal to bang. There we go. So the entire start to finish. Um, much better approach than asking, dear user, um, <laughs> how did you run into that <laughs> error? Right? So, excellent. Okay, so um, structured logging, very cool things. Did you, you guys are still here on the call with me, correct? We are. Okay, Indeed. I'm. apparently my sharing is broken. I'm gonna edit this part out. What the heck happened? Did I not share my screen? We did, oh, it's did. just not updating. For me anyway, it's kinda. Oh, it's it's getting there slow, for me. Frame by frame. Oh no, and I think you guys weren't logged here. I didn't get you guys on the screen the whole time. Yeah, that's sometimes we were there, but that's fine. Okay, uh, so t I'll wrap it up then. Okay, so as you can see, that's um, there. There's quite a bit of information that is structured. It's written out by default by the framework, and we can access it using some kind of sequential or some kind of structured logging endpoint, such as C uh, Seek or SEQ or the Elk stack, as Simon suggested. So lots of options there. Some really good ways to diagnose what's going wrong in our application. Well, I think I'm with Simon now. I'm excited about login. <laughs> <laughs> <Who knew? Should> be. <laughs>
it's a, like I said, it's right up there with accounting. Um, okay. So uh, we we do have we do have uh, a, a new contest that may or may not be running. So um, you'll have to try and figure that out. I guess if you're interested. Part of the contest is always figuring out what the contest is. And if there is one running. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. Uh, thanks a lot for everyone joining us today talking about structured logging. We will see you on the next episode of the Monsters Weekly. Thanks. Bye. Cheers. Bye.